Hello, my name is Bahria Kamal and I'm a lecturer in contemporary and post-colonial studies. My teaching and research engage with a range of different areas and today I will point towards conflict, activism and solidarity studies, post-colonial partition literature, spatial studies and the East Mediterranean as related to a project entitled Writing Cyprus. This project consists of a range of interrelated literary and artistic activities that collectively became a part of the book with the same title, Writing Cyprus, Post-Colonial and Partition Literatures of Place and Space. All of these activities aim to show the role of literature in and for sites that have been colonised, partitioned and undergone conflicting identities. So thinking about the role of literature in sites that have experienced intense post-colonial failures ending in a deeply divided and displaced people. For this, Cyprus is and was an important case for various reasons. Firstly, I'm from Cyprus, so I felt a deep connection to the case of Cyprus. But adding to this, Cyprus is a Mediterranean island that is strategically located between west and east or north and south. And this locality has meant that Cyprus has always been in the process of production, starting with readings and constructions by Western and non-Western ruling regimes through to constructions by people of Cyprus. By people of Cyprus, I mean Cypriot Greeks, Cypriot Turks, Cypriot Armenians, Cypriot Maronite. And the project focused mainly on the two more dominant groups, the Cypriot Greeks and the Cypriot Turks. To understand this division between the Cypriot Greeks and the Cypriot Turks and this production between and for Cyprus, within this project, it's important for us to understand the history of Cyprus. And I will briefly explain here, very brief, um, just to clarify. But like every post-colonial partition case, the history and politics is a competing narrative. So briefly, just to explain, Cyprus was conquered by the Ottomans in 1571, and the project begins in and around uh, the Ottoman imperial moment followed by British rule in 1878 through to 1960. From 1950, there was a competing anti-colonial uprising, a division between the Cypriot Greeks and the Cypriot Turks, who both fought for independence from the British separately. One for a Greece, Greek Cyprus, one for a Turkish Turkey Cyprus. This gave way to independence, which was followed by various post-colonial failures, including deep conflict with partition in 1963 and 74, followed by geographic partition in 1974, um, where Cypriot Greeks were uprooted and transferred to the south, and Cypriot Turks uprooted and transferred to the north. Prior to this, they lived um, together. The island remains partitioned today, However, there was a pivotal moment in 2000 and 2003 when, as a, com uh, as a consequence of the UN referendum, the borders opened for the first time since 1974 and people were able to board across to the other side to see the homes and lands they left behind. Yet the island remains divided. So the important thing for this project, Writing Cyprus, was thinking about the role of literature in each of these moments that I've just explained. Where I noticed that the study of Cyprus was framed around and predominantly framed around history and politics, studies of history and politics, which often gave way to competing narratives in each of these moments, ending in deadlock. Never has there been a study of the case of Cyprus within a literary framework. So I felt the need to really delve into the literatures of Cyprus. Through studying the literatures of Cyprus, I found many answers to this question, the role of literatures of Cyprus in conflict. By literatures of Cyprus here, I mean Hellenophone, Turkophone, and Anglophone writings by Cypriots 
of diverse backgrounds, so Cypriot Greeks, Cypriot Turkey, Cypriot Armenian, Cypriot Maronite, alongside literatures by Greeks, by Turks and by Britons. Date-wise, the project engaged with a 100-year period, so starting in and around 1919 to 20 and ending in 2019, or we can even say 2020, because I'm finalising the project now. So if we're looking at the literatures, the most significant aspect that I noticed and that was really noticeable was that even though the literatures have always been ethnically and linguistically divided, particularly amongst the Cypriot Greeks and Cypriot Turks, there has always been common practice, common themes and common ground. Firstly, uh, a significant thing that I noticed with the literatures of Cyprus, they negotiate with and respond to all of these moments, showing that colonialism, partition and conflict are issues of place and space. Here showing that all of these moments are about place and space. The literature showed that place and space is a force within these movements and moments. Such a powerful force that it determined and de determines the identity of the people so as to create an identification. The literature showed the ways that these peoples actively wrote, read and constructed Cyprus so as to enable a move beyond the dominant binary legacy of historical political deadlock discourse, as in most post-colonial partition cases, so as to generate so solidarity for the production of a differential Cyprus, the actual and active production of a differential Cyprus that moves beyond all binaries, boundaries and borders. Here, the literatures of Cyprus showed the power of place and space, and this gave way for literature to meet ideas of spatial studies and theories of spatial studies. I mainly thought about um, humanistic geography, understood via Yifu Tuwan, who proposes an idea that uh, a person is at the centre of geography, experiencing place which is enclosed, secure, safe and space which is open, more dangerous and free. So these experience place and space um, both at once and Yifu Tuwan's ideas of humanistic geography met Marxist philosophy. And here uh, I, I focused on Henry Lefebvre's ideas of the production of space, the power of the production of space, and that all space is a social production. So these are the main ideas that I negotiated with in this project, Writing Cyprus. And I will now talk about the kinds of activities I focused on so as to demonstrate this understanding of the literatures of Cyprus in relation to the power of place and space so as to capture a distinct solidarity for the production of a differential Cyprus beyond the dominant deadlock, beyond the binaries, beyond the borders. So there were four areas um, within the project that I zoomed into. One was literature and education. Two, literature and nationalism. Three, literature and peace. Four, literature and the diaspora. So in the remaining, of this in the remaining sections and part of this paper, I will talk about these four main areas as related to Cyprus. So uh, Cyprus, divided Cyprus, the North and the South, Cypriot, Greek, Cypriot, Turk. Um, and related to various kinds of activities that all gave way to um, the Writing Cyprus project and the book Writing Cyprus. So, starting with literature and education. So here I focused on literature as related to the pedagogical sector that is shot through with political and ideological implications. The research began with me uh, exploring the pedagogical imperialism of the Ottoman moment through to the British moment, to its impacts in present policy. We focus on the national curricula in the secondary schools on both sides of the divide in Cyprus. For the study, I did um, some fieldwork in Cyprus where I met with the Ministry of Education on both sides of the divide. 
I met with the inspectors of literature on both sides of the divide. The inspectors of literature are those who wrote and constructed the curriculum and textbooks that the children or uh, the, 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 the uh, children study at the schools in Cyprus. And I also did some auditing within the classes. The study showed that literature education has throughout history, from Ottoman moment till now, always defined and divided the people, yet with the potential to unite them. The literature curriculum in particular, so the current literature curriculum, showed a very interesting common ground. So though divided, there, are, there was common relations between the two literatures, particularly the pedagogical model that was used. And on both sides of the divide, uh, the Cypriot Greek, Cypriot Turks, imitated the literature pedagogies of Greece or Turkey, so the alternative ethnic centres, focusing mainly on writings by authors from these other ethnic regions, with less or little attention paid to Cypriot writings. There was also other parallels. Remember our notion of place and space? It's very significant throughout the narratives, whether that be the narratives by uh, people from Greece or Turkey, or uh, the people of Cyprus. So key themes in relation to writings by the Cypriots, the idea of an ancient geography was very core in the literatures. Thinking of an ancient Greek geography, an ancient Greek place and space that defined being Greek Cypriot. Or on the other side, an Ottoman geography, an Ottoman uh, civilization and spatiality that defined a Turkish Cyprus. At the same time, there was lots of literatures on nature, um, the nature of the alternative centres, not so much the nature of Cyprus. But there was also a very significant engagement with property, property and gardens, homes and gardens. And this was really, really dominant. And another really dominant aspect of this idea of property and gardens was the notion of the key. And here the focus was on what I've come to call the key fetish. The key fetish and an idea of a promise of return. Now what this relates to is in the 1960s and 1970s, as I've explained, many Cypriots on both sides of the divide were uprooted and displaced and they had to leave their homes behind. Whether that be in the 60s, many Cypriot Turks, in the 70s, many Cypriot Greeks uprooted, left their home and were forced to leave their homes. They locked their keys and they left, hoping that they will return to their homes. Obviously, today we are in 2019, they haven't returned to their homes, but many people have held on to their keys. And this figures in uh, the curriculum. There are a lot of poems around property and keys. And this has a very personal connection to me because my grandmother, who share, who I, whose name I share, Bahriya Kemal, um, she is from a village called Kofinu in the north, sorry, in the south. And in the 60s, uh, she, 60s and 70s, she was uprooted and she bored across to the other side, locked her door uh, with the hope that she may return someday. Uh, However, of course, she never did return. And this is an, there's also many, many examples. So the Cypriot Turks, Cypriot Greeks suffered the same pain. So this notion of holding on to the key. And here, um, as a gift on my wedding, my grandmother gave me uh, her keys. So this is a key from her house that she left behind and she never returned to. So it's, what, what this shows within the curriculum is that there is common ground between Cypriot Greeks and Cypriot Turks. Even though there is a division, both sides have suffered collectively. Both sides negotiate with this collective suffering, this collective pain of partition, which is captured in the literatures. The dominant narratives of history and politics bring deadlock a lot of the time. I'm speaking about the dominant nationalist narratives. But the literary narratives, even though they're dominant and they're official, they don't bring deadlock. They bring common ground. They bring a common key towards solidarity, 
towards unity, towards a united Cyprus, where together in solidarity we are displaced. So, literature and education, the literatures on literature education on both sides of the divide demonstrate that even though the literatures and the education have always been divided, there are common themes and common ground, and both literatures define um, the official identity um, of Cyprus, Greek Cypriot or Turkish Cypriot, which is captured in the curricula. Now, moving on to the second area, another really important area, was nationalism and literature. This also shows the role of literature as related to place and space to capture solidarity for a different Cyprus. The focus was on anti-colonial nationalist identifications and constructions, which dominated throughout the colonial and decolonial moment as related to the Cypriot Greek movement, Eoka, that longed for Enosis. Enosis was um, an ideology that sought to unite with Greece. So it was an ideology that wanted to wanted independence from the British and then to unite with Greece. And then on the other side, the Cypriot Turks had TMT uh, with an ideology for Taksim. Taksim meant partition, and their goal, of course, was to partition Cyprus and unite with Turkey. This decolonial moment was, was from and in and around, as I said, 1950s and 1960s. And it was, of course, shaped around a deeply divided yet again a parallel literary turn with a distinct national consciousness. This moment was based on, for example, state-sponsored publications of anthologies, prose, poetry books, which were all shaped around core national Cypriot figures such as Kostas Monktis, Claire Angelides, Özker Yashin and Süleyman Uluçemgil, amongst various other uh, nationalist writers. These writers were committed to the nationalising moments, they founding, leading and or dying for the liberation struggle. And or they had official positions after independence and after the 1974 partition, giving them total agency to use literature as a vehicle to move the masses and provide national definition. The nationalist writings, again based on deeply competing narratives, yet as I've said several times, they use the same practices to read and construct Cyprus. So on one side, it was a focus on the ancient and modern Greece, Cyprus, and on the other side, focusing on Ottoman Turkey, Cyprus. This spatial competition and solidarity illuminated the decolonial partition invention of gendered nationalism using Tuan's ideas of national place and Lefebvre's ideas of abstract nation. Here, together, they produced an ethnically homogenous mental place through gender processes that manipulated social, historical and spatial practices to make the abstract nation appear concrete. Thus, producing Cyprus as a gift and inadvertently as a hermaphrodite Cyprus. For this uh, research on nationalism and literature in this area, I interviewed many of the nationalist poets and writers on both sides of the divide. And these writers and poets uh, were members of EOKA or TMT. So many of the EOKA and TMT members of the 50s and 60s were also poets who would sing liberation, who would poetically perform liberation uh, within the liberation movement. Other than interviewing uh, the members of the anti-colonial movement. Of course, I read a wide selection of their works from the 1950s and 60s and came across some really interesting out of print material like zines um, from the 50s and 60s where these nationalists would meet, you know, prior to setting out to fight against the British um, and come together in saloons and produce literatures and little pamphlets that were also fighting with them towards liberation. So in this case, we ended up having what we can call the ethnic motherland nationalists as an identification that was determined by producing a Greece Cyprus or a Turkey Cyprus in the 50s and 60s in particular. Now this ends up bringing us to the third area, which is literature and peace. 
So there's something different now. Here, we move to the 80s and 90s. So it's after the cutting of the island, the partitioning of the island. Here, there is a peace poetics with activist writers working together towards a united Cyprus. So this is shaped by a group that came about after and as a result of the 1963 and 74 partition and we could call them the Cypriotist writers that sought and fought collectively for a united Cyprus. So this is a post-colonial identification that rewrites the colonial ethnic nationalist and or partition production of Cyprus through a binational and bicommunal literary, artistic and social movement that was shaped by many, many writers, but some core writers that I was really interested in um, are Yorgos Moleskis, Fikret Demira, Meeting, Ivi Melungro, Eli P Pianido, Mehmet Yashin, and Neshe Yashin, amongst various others. These writers responded to the post-colonial failures, especially the first and second partitions. These authors focus on the actual and idealistic quest for conflict resolution and peace in Cyprus, whereby they habitually wander and board across towards a pre-partitioned homeland. This production is determined by a Cypriot-centric birth cycle, restoring roots and Mother Cyprus, not Mother Greece, not Mother Turkey, now it's Mother Cyprus. And a journey cycle, restoring local wanderings of three types of gifts. These gifts were the spatial history of the island itself, the material romantic natural rhythm of the island itself, and the social domestic childhood rhythm of the island itself. I keep repeating of the island itself because this isn't about Greece or Turkey anymore. It's a move away from the ethnic centres. They're not mothers anymore. The mother is Cyprus. Let's unite Cyprus. And these processes by the Cypriotist writers captured the concrete abstraction of, a me of Mediterranean waters and rhythms of Cyprus. This production of Cyprus is an ethnically and culturally inclusive um, operation and it operates via multiple places, spaces, times and energies within the island's geocultural borders. Now, for an understanding of literature and peace and this group of uh, writers, of course, I focused on reading their material. Um, and again, very interesting works in terms of various manifestos written in the 80s and 90s on this notion of Cypriotism. But at the same time, there was a lot of interesting activity in terms of collective movements. But remember, the island was partitioned and these writers lived separately, some in the north, some in the south, so, and they couldn't meet. So what ended up happening, of course, is that they ended up coming to the former Imperial Centre London and meeting here and doing events here and exchanging poetics here. These are Turkish speaking and Greek speaking. So there was an, a power and element of translation um, and crossing languages as well as crossing each other's uh, locations, this notion of the North and South meeting met in London um, and this gave way to obviously the writers of the diaspora also negotiating with these peace poets in the 80s and 90s. So now this brings me to the final area, literature and the diaspora, which links to the peace poets but of course um, opens up a little further. So here the focus was on the marginalised diaspora, so as to show how they capture the truths of colonialism, post-colonialism and partition. The Cypriot diaspora refers to Anglophone, Hellenophone and Turkophone authors that are part of various colonial and post-colonial migratory waves related to internal and external displacements. And it included those who departed from, remained in and or return to Cyprus. In the project, the focus was on a range of literary movements, translation projects and publishing ventures, which demonstrated multicommunal and multilingual initiatives with transnational literary turns. Focus here was on the contemporary Anglophone writers who were part of the largest migration to Britain, 
And this has, a, again, a personal connection to me because my family were also part of this large migration to Britain. They came here in the 60s and 70s, not as writers, uh, but they did come here as migrants. Um, and I linked these Anglophone writers to other authors who remained in Cyprus, particularly Hellenophone, Anglophone and Turkophone writers who remained in Cyprus and collectively looked at the ways these writers adopted a, a hospitable positionality and production that carried the weight of both diasporic and Cypriot experiences within the colonial, post-colonial and partition moments. These experiences relayed official and unofficial and dominant and marginalized narratives. They negotiated with different places and spaces, i.e. North and South, country and city, London, Athens, Nicosia, Istanbul and beyond. They captured different time zones and different energies that collectively negotiated with the making and breaking of multiple mutable identifications and multiple mutable Cypresses. As part of this work, I obviously um, engaged with the literatures by a broad range of Anglophone and uh, Anglophone writers, um, including, for example, Stefano Stefanides, Aydin Mimedali, Alevedil, Taner Baybars, um, as well as writers who remained in Cyprus but wrote in, in English. For example, Nora Najerine, who is a Cypriot Armenian leading poet. Um, Miranda Hoblaros, who, is, uh, who spent a lot of time in, in Africa, in Zimbabwe, and, and other writers such as Niki Marango and um, Gurgenj Kogmazen. As part of this work, um, I also worked directly with many of the Anglophone writers to shape various collectives with a range of events that sought to capture solidarity for a differential Cyprus. This collective included the coming together of around, I'd say, 30 women. We were writers, poets and scholars, all connected to different parts of divided Cyprus and the globe, where we came together and worked together to capture an alternative Cyprus. And the kinds of projects we did included a series of poetry and prose readings, art exhibitions, filmmaking, and walking and writing workshops in different parts of Cyprus and Europe. But we always ended up back in Nicosia. Nicosia is the capital of Cyprus. It's the last divided capital in the world. And we would end up in the buffer zone. This, these practices resulted in us creating a range of zines, contemporary zines, and a range of publications that ended in um, ultimately the Writing Cyprus project, the Writing Cyprus book, but also other publications such as Nicosia Beyond Barriers, Voices from a Divided City. These initiatives gave way for the idea of border crossing, an active and actual border crossing from north to south where I engaged with the notion of the forbidden zone, a third space that enabled a north-south or a Cypriot, Greek, Cypriot, Turkish doubling, and then a further broader crossing towards a tripling of languages, English, Turkish, Greek, a tripling of nations, Greece, Turkey, Britain, and a tripling of people that collectively generated a transnational Cyprus. Thus, the Writing Cyprus project fo focused on and focuses on the role of literature in sites of conflict, the role of literature in post-colonial and partition sites with a people that have been deeply divided and displaced, which was understood through a range of interrelated activities as related to literature and education, literature and national nationalism, literature and peace activism, literature and the diaspora. All of these, uh, this, these dynamics gave way, all of these energies gave way to the book Writing Cyprus, Post-Colonial and Partition Literatures of Place and Space. Writing Cyprus showed that the literatures offers an alternative way of understanding sites of conflict enabling us to recognise the power of place and space to shape identities, these fixed blocks, 
so that they can be understood or so that they can be shaped as identifications, different identifications, multiple identifications, all determined by the construction of place and space, where we could move beyond the dominant binary legacy of historical political deadlock discourse. The Writing Cyprus project provides not only a nuanced understanding of the actual and active production of colonialism, post-colonialism and partition, but also the best possible model to understand sites of deep and intense conflict, thus offering a distinct solidarity that captures the truth of place and space for a differential transnational Cyprus, a transnational Mediterranean and a transnational world beyond all binaries, boundaries and deadlock that we can all inhabit. Thank you so much.